Hello, hi, and welcome. In today's video, we are going to talk about prefabs, which is short for prefabricated objects, uh, which whenever you get something from another project, from the internet, from a store, uh, most, not always, but most of the time, those are prefabricated objects that you can just import in your project and you just drag and drop them into your scene and they're ready to use, pretty much. With most of the time, you still have to change some of the parameters. So I will show you how that works, how we work, how we basically work with those prefabs in this video. So let's just dive right into it. We're continuing from the last state where we learned about the controls and we can control our little player object here. So what we want to do now is we want to add uh, some things that we can, can bump into that will slow us down, that will push us away. So uh, some limitations here. Therefore, I will very simply start with creating new 3D objects. Two types. The first type will just be a little, little, uh, it could be a capsule, it could be a cylinder, it could be a cube, could be anything. I am going to choose a cylinder. There we've got the that we've got the cylinder. The first thing I will do is rename that to a uh, bouncy thing. Bouncy. I will just call it bouncy. Um, bouncy will get, right, will get and become a prefab. So bouncy will become a prefab. Therefore, I want to transform it first uh, at space 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0 down there. What we can do to make Bouncy a prefab is we just drag the object from the scene into our assets. When we do that, you will see Bouncy becomes blue. Bouncy down here is now also in our um, project, in our project assets. I can now, if I want to, I can just delete Bouncy here and just grab him from the prefabs as many times as I want into the project. Let's Put them just twice in your, let's put them three times, doesn't matter. We can use it as many times as we want, right? So that is the prefab and we've got bouncy, bouncy one, bouncy two. They're all individual uh, copies and of bouncy. They're not just copies, they are related to bouncy here, to the bouncy prefab. <clears throat> so what we want to do, all of these now, I have them. Let's, let's say those are enemies and I've got a hundred of those in the project. It would be kind of annoying if you make one change to change them all individually. And that is the big advantage of prefabs um, that I can just change my bouncy here and all three will change because they are still connected with the prefab. So the first thing I want to do is give it a nice look. Let's give it a bouncy appearance. Let's give it a material, create new material that is bouncy material. And that will just be something like bluish. I think bluish could be, could look like a bouncy bubblegum thingy. What I can do is I can just drag that over to bouncy down here. And now bouncy has the material. And you see all three instances, that's, that's how those are called. All three instances of bouncy have been changed, have been adapted with the new material. That's nice. The second thing I want Bouncy to have is a new physics material. So I create a physics material. So nothing new. That's stuff we already talked about. Bouncy physics. And I want Bouncy to not have any friction, but to very bound, to be very bouncy here, right? To be very, very bouncy. Uh, and the bounce combined, no, it should be the maximum. We want the maximum bounciness here. Right? And I can just, again, drag and drop that to our bouncy. And now all three of those. Yes, <laughs> you have to click on it for, for some reason. That, that was an error with Unity, but okay. Uh, now all three of those, you see they have the bouncy physics material connected. You can do additional changes. If you just go on your prefab here and you double click, it will open the prefab um the prefab editor if i now decide to make it for example smaller or more thick let's make it more thick right like this that's probably bad but we can change it back i'm doing this i'm going back and you see all bounces have changed the same with newer unity versions you can do the same in the 
editor itself. So if you go on top here, you see a little arrow right next to the blue indicated uh, instance of a bouncy. If I click on it, you will see that the word becomes gray and just bouncy is now still active. You can change the map up here in the menu. If you click normal, you will have the normal view. If you click gray, everything will be grayed out except for the instance you are working on right now. If you click hidden, it's only the one prefab that you're working with. So if you now uh, change something on this, for example, the scale, I will change the scale back to one, hit enter. You see all the other instances, they directly change with it, right? So that's a thing that we can do to edit all of these. If you just want to edit one of them, just click on it, don't click on the arrow and just change one of them. That is possible because those are parameters, right? So I just now have one big bouncy, two small ones. Now the thing is, if I now change the global one here, right? The one parameter that we have changed, right? I think this one here. Yeah, the Z does not change anymore for the one that was before, that we had before, the bouncy. We changed it. We overwrote it. If I go back to bouncy here, I can see that I overwrote it with this little blue indicator. It's hard to see, but this little blue indicator says that this one is overwriting the global bouncy prefab. If you want to get that back, you just click right click and you can click revert. Revert brings it back so we are accessing the global one again. So let's actually um, change them all back so they are all 111 again. I go to the global one, I say uh, 111. And for some reason, this is 0 0.3, I will also change that to 0. And now that's what we have. So, how does Bouncy behave? Let's click play, let's bounce into it, and you will see it's really boink, it's really bouncy. Right? We bounce into it, our player even starts rotating because of some friction is left and it's just crazy behavior. Right? So that's with the bouncy prefab. If I want to have more bouncies, I just do this. Right? It's so easy. I just have bouncies all over the place, no problem. If I want one of them bigger, I, no problem, I just drag that one bigger. If I want all of them bigger, I just drag all of them bigger by changing the prefab. I want to change it back because that's pretty ugly. I don't want as many, so I can just delete them. Yeah. Um, if you want to disconnect one of the bouncies forever from that prefab, you can right click on it. There's prefab and there is unpack. There's unpack and there's unpack completely. This will unpack the whole prefab and disconnect it. So that bouncy for now, you see it's not blue anymore, is disconnected from the global uh, prefab here. If I change this bouncy, 4 won't change anymore. I cannot reconnect it. So be careful when um, deleting, uh, when, when disconnecting prefabs, when, yeah, unpacking prefabs. Unpack and unpack completely. Unpack just means unpack this one object. It could be that there is more objects inside the prefab, more prefabs in the prefab, and then unpack completely, unpacks them all. Just unpack, only unpacks the one you have selected. That, we will talk about parenting later on. So now I've got bouncy. I want to make a second one so we can play around a little bit in our game here. I will just put those bouncies at the borders here somewhere so I have them. The second thing I want to add very quickly, a second prefab. It would also be nice to actually have those in a folder here. Create a folder. Let's call those prefabs. And I will put a bouncy in there. Right. Everything that I can just use, I will just grab from the prefab folder later on. So let's make a second uh, prefab that we can use. Right click a 3D object. Let's make a cube, for example. Uh, I want to make a very, very small cube. Right, A very small, thin cube. Uh, very thin, so I want to change the Y here. Maybe 0 0.01. A very, very thin cube. And that is slowing our character down through friction. So I make this a prefab again. I don't want this cube here anymore. I just want to, you don't need to delete it, but it's cleaner right now for me to do. Uh, I want to give this a new material, create material. Key, uh, oh, whoops, I called it cube. Of course, I can rename it. Just click on it and right click rename or cl slowly click on the name again. That is bouncy. That is 
sticky. <laughs> I will call that sticky. Let's get, create a new material for sticky. Uh, where is it? The new material. Sticky material. I think a nice green would suit it. And I want to. I want it to be gooey, so I'll make it see-through. I will make it a bit transparent. If I want to make it transparent, click on the color here now, and let's make it a bit fade away. That should be on sticky. Now sticky also needs a physics material. So right click, create a physics material. And that is sticky material. That will go on sticky, drag and drop, boink. Sticky should have friction, right? It should have maybe four static, four dynamic friction, right? And I can now put those plates wherever I want them. Maybe they're a little bit too much see-through, but that's fine. So now those are sticky platforms. Right? So let's see those sticky platforms. I walk over them and my character is actually stuck because it's too sticky. So I, but I can jump out of it. Right? There's now very quickly talking about the last part here. Um, the sticky material, there's dynamic friction, there's static friction. Dynamic friction, if I set it to zero, it won't stop me anymore, right? It won't stop me. Whoops, I can fall down. <laughs> Uh, that's the di uh, that's the dynamic friction and the static friction. If I'm already standing on it, I can't start anymore right? because of the static friction. If I set static to zero, I can again start. Um, if I put dynamic to five or something, it will actually stop me. If I don't want it to stop that much, I can just go down with the value. And now it's just slowing me down a little bit. Maybe a bit more, 2.5 or something. Yeah, now it's just slowing me down. That's bouncy, that's sticky. Uh, yeah, I could not put those as many times on the plane on the project as I want because I have them as a prefab, right? So very nice, very nice, very good. Um, that will be sorted into prefabs. I will also very quickly create two new folders. The one is called materials. Um, there we will put all the materials in that we have so far. Right, that's just one folder. The other folder will be um, called scripts. I just want to clean up a little bit. You should always clean up, right? That's very nice. So that's it. I control S for saving the project. And that is the use of prefabs, the basic use. There's, of course, many, many more things you can do with it in the long run, but those are the basics. Prefabs, things you can reuse. So whenever I want a sticky platform, I just put it there. That's it. I've got one, a bouncy one. That's it. <laughs> very simple, very, very easy. Of course, that goes also for enemies later on, that goes for traps, that goes for anything that you can imagine. So that's it for this video on prefabs. Of course, there's more to it. Those are the basics. If this video is any helpful, if you like this series, leave a like, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment, say hi <laughs> or say bye, because that's what I'm saying right now. You stay awesome, stay safe, stay healthy out there, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Bye.